Hey everyone, I just want to give a quick rundown of this material blueprint system I've developed in case anyone was interested in learning more or finding out about it. Basically, you can put in your meshes, your material um, in the blueprint, your baked normal, but this is all designed around a, a layered material system. In this system, it has the ability to have falloffs, fernels, height blends through a texture, light masks like point lights, spotlights, directional lights, skylights. It has noise, it has RGB masks, sub masks for the RGB masks if needed, triplanar, vertex painting, world height. It has a bunch of stuff, but this is just a quick demo of some of the stuff uh, in the material as well as in the blueprint. So in the blueprint here, you see this is a just a mega scans a column I grabbed with a very basic um, material layer setup. And the main thing I want to show off is in here, you can set up all of the controls for all of this thing. So for now, in like layer zero in the base layer, I can overwrite the UVs on it and I can just change it. If I want to, I can overwrite the base color. And as long as this is checked, I can then tint it. And you can see it's only affecting the the layer it's on. So if I want to go layer two, I can overwrite that and I can tint the top. So I have a lot of control per layer of what I do with this. Not only do I have all of the base color, metallic roughness, everything here you see. Um, I have things like skylight emissive in case you want to do a, a fake reflection. Opacity, it supports AO. Uh, it also has the material layer blend controls. So here is where I can actually put in my RGB masks. So I don't actually need to put them in so, um, in the material. I can just overwrite them here. So if I swap this out to like something else, you can see only for that layer, it changed. You can see it's changing it, but only in channel one. So this allows you to have a full material setup and then a, per object have a different material because I can make a copy of this. And then in this version, I can go ahead and swap out the mask channel and go in and say, that is the new mask. I could override the channel that it's in. So if I want to, I can go ahead and swap back to the original, say instead of the original channel, it is now the red channel. You can see there, it is now swapping. Uh, currently, the red channels, I believe, used on uh, an above uh, thing. So if I did green, that's the default. Blue, there you go. It's now using that because that is the blue channel of that mask. You can, of course, also use the alpha, but in my case, it's only an RGB channel. There is no alpha. The system, as I mentioned, has point light, spotlight, directional light masks, and these are world space masks. So they can go into in a separate videos. It also has the ability to have random color offsets per objects, along with random color per layer. So if I go to the base color and I go, for example, on the main section and I overwrite the base color and let's just put that back to white. And if I say random color offset and I do like 0.5, you can see it became purple, it's just 0.5 offset. But if I make more of these, they're all randomly 0.5 offset. And again, if I want to, I can just have these be more offset, less offset. And there's also values if you want to have uh, a dark, uh, black and white um, difference, you can use that. Enable it in the controls, base color here. I will just turn on value change. And now in here, I can do that. And now one became darker, one became lighter. So I can push these, but depending on the value it shows, it might already be much darker and brighter automatically. This system also allows for ability to have clear coat as translucent, mask the materials, and it has both wind world position offset and uniform world position offset settings, including mask controls for this. So you have a lot of control in the blueprint, but this does not require you to use the blueprint if you do not want to. All of these controls are in the material system itself. So you have your normal setup here, base color metallics, all your normal stuff as you find, as well as an isotropy, as a parallax occlusion mapping. It has the texture height blending. This height is not the same as the parallax occlusion mapping and the per object is for the blueprint. So we also have the fake lighting. So if I turn this on, on the base layer, 
So this is the basic version of this, but if I go under fake light shadow and I look at layer zero and I enable it, you could see all of a sudden one side just became very bright because that is the light. And if I turn on shadow strength to one, it's very hard to see, but if I go to unlit, you could see it becomes dark. I'm gonna push it even further. And the use of this, this is actually going off of the directional light. So whatever directional light is facing, so if I was to rotate this, that fake light also moves with it. So it's tied to it. So this is very nice when you need to do a bit of fake lighting on a movable object that cannot cast shadow from baked lighting. That's kind of for things like that. And some other nifty things is under the blend. As I mentioned, we have a lot of these and I can make full videos on each one of these. This is just a super fast rundown. But the other thing I wanna show is along with all of these options, I also have the options to disable blending of certain layers. So I can, in this case, I'm only blending the normals, the base, I mean occlusion and the roughness, and I've just disabled the blending of these of the other ones to save instructions. So if I turn on, for example, emissive, it's gonna go from 605, 610. So by turning off blending of anything I don't want, it's saving a few instructions. This allows me to have a more complex um, material and save a few instructions along the way to make room for other things. Everything in this setup is designed that if you do not enable it, it is not being computed. Everything is only on a enable it and then it works. Otherwise it is effectively not existing. You don't need to worry about, it, which is why I'm able to put everything into one material instead of having things in 10 different very varied materials. There's also bl uh, varied blending mounts. So if I do alternative base color blend under the base color settings, you can see I can actually change the way the, the base color blends. So I can make it a multiply and overlay soft light. All of these options are available to me. So if I want to, I just enable it to be a multiply. And the one I'm on becomes a multiply, which I believe is this guy. Uh, which layer am I on right now? I'm on the bottom one. Yeah, so this is bottom one and has become a multiply. So if I changed it from multiply to let's say add, I believe this one, you can see it become a lot brighter. So you have a lot of blending controls. You can also change the overall blend in strength, but every single section, as soon as you enable it, as you can see, but nothing's under Fresnel, nothing under light mask, noise, nothing. But then once you turn it on, all the options become available because then it is doing the computations for these. But as long as things are disabled, it is to say it is not actually computing anything. And one other thing I wanted to show off is I have made some tools for this. So this allows me to also place more of this object in the world and I can give it a variation so I can have it scaled randomly if I'd like. There you go. And you see they're all matching together because this is the layer setting, uh, the random is on everything at once, but you might want to have it on multiple things. So that is where this section comes, uh, comes in. So I can turn on the random color and then override the colors. Of course, the overrides are there to override the settings in the material itself. So if I was happy and I set it up in the material, I wouldn't need to override anything, but this is overriding per object. As you can see, I am now overriding with these multiply. So you can use these for color tinting, for values, whatever you want. And of course, change the intensity on this. But one other thing you might guys notice is these are all transforms. What I'm able to do is by selecting it, I can now move these. These are all hierarchical instant static meshes. So it is very performant and it allows me to make adjustments to any one of these as I see fit while keeping things uh, optimized. And since the whole thing is still one big blueprint, I can just move the whole thing, make a copy of it, and do whatever I want with it. So effectively, this is a very performance-optimized 
material system, blueprint system that I've developed. If you guys are interested, let me know with a like, a comment, a subscribe. And if you want a full rundown of this full system, or if it's something that you'd be interested in um, getting for yourself, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys potentially next time. Take care. Bye.